frankly, I don't think the church is going to be big enough. We've had so many yeses. I mean, we've invited 150. Well, you've got to, haven't you? But we're banked on several not being able to come. I was hoping there was some in particular would say no, especially all that clan of your father's from Stoke-on-Trent. <laughs> the Lawsons are coming all the way from Exeter. Oh, I don't mind the Lawson. She's a nice little body. And he's no trouble at all since his asthma cleared up. But that lot from Stoke. <clears throat> are those your cousins that won the pools? Mm. Money doesn't buy breeding, Bob. They don't know how to live in a decent house. The moment they moved into theirs, the first thing they did was to rip up all the lavatory seats and use them for picture frames. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, I don't know who we're going to seat them next to. Huh? Oh, no, of course, no. He'll be sitting at the top table, won't he? Best man. Taking care of the bridesmaid. You will take care of me, won't you, Terry? Certainly. I think we should have had a bigger church. We should have used St Andrews. Certainly not. Your father's lot might be Presbyterian, but no daughter of mine's being married in any church other than C of E. Well, I don't see what difference it makes. I mean, there are many roads to God. There may be many roads to God, Robert, but I've always considered the Church of England to be the M1, so to speak. <laughs> Well, if that was the case, pedestrians, learners, and people in inbred carriages would never get to heaven. <laughs> Is he being rude? Oh, come on, Mum. It was quite witty. And some fell on stony ground. Well, I hope his best man's speech is going to be funnier than that. I'm not making a speech. What does he mean? Of course he is. It's expected. However badly he does it. You have to make a speech, kid. You have to toast the bridesmaids and read out the telegram. Well, I don't mind doing that, but I'm not making a speech. But you must, Terry. It's expected. Sorry? The best man always makes a speech. You've got to. There's no way that I can be made to make a speech. Oh, but you'll make such a good one. Pardon? It'll be the highlight of the day. Will it? And it is expected. And you are responding on my behalf. Am I? Well, perhaps just this once. We're only going to get married this once, hopefully. <laughs> I'll say, I'm not going through all this again. Oh, oh. All this what, Robert? All this, um, fuss. This fuss, as you term it, is on your ben it's for your benefit. The bride's parents assume authority for all this fuss and are not in considerable expense involved. I want this day to be the, the most joyful, the happiest that my daughter's ever had. And if it isn't, someone's going to suffer for it. Well, how come this happy and joyful day is making everybody so bad-tempered and miserable? I'm not bad-tempered and miserable. Yes, you are. You've been bad-tempered all week. I have not, dearest. <laughs> I'm perfectly happy to go along with anything that you and your mother demand, suggest. <laughs> oh, there's so much to be done. I just don't know how I'm going to get through it all. The dressmaker's due in ten minutes and the caterer's at twelve. Ooh, we've got to go down to the hair shop to see about those pages' outfits. Pages? Yes, Thelma's little nephews, De Dean and Kirk. They're going to be uh, Royal Stuart Tartan with silk ruffles. Isn't that a bit Presbyterian? <laughs> Is he being rude? <laughs> well, actually, Mum, I am a bit worried about those two. Young Dean's such a, well... Evil? Yes, he's an evil child. Well, I blame her. She just let him run right. Well, I don't want him running right at my wedding. No, well, right according to this, that's Terry's responsibility anyway. Yeah. Hang on a minute, listen. <laughs> Says here, in case of any disturbance, the best man will do what he can to pour oil on troubled waters, pacifying the parties concerned with persuasive and polite tact. What does all that mean? It means if young Dean gives you any stick, you kick him up the kilt. <laughs> Really, Robert, I don't know where you get these coarse expressions from. Oh, yes, I do. <laughs> Your dressmaker's early. Oh, now, come on, girls. Good gracious. Get rid of that coffee. Oh, all right. There's so much to do. And you boys, you can't sit round here all the morning daydreaming. Far too much to get through. Look, you've got to pick up your suits this morning, haven't you? Yes, yes. And speak to the taxi people. I know, I know. It's all in and hand. And don't forget the flowers for the church. Now, come on, tell me. What is it you've got to do now? Come church on. Church flowers, bridesmaids, bouquets, bridesmaids, bouquets, buttonholes. That's right. Oh, and you've got to ring the vicar and check the cost of the choir, the bell ringers, and the use of his organ. <laughs> <laughs> Pearls, Chief, do you have to take all this? Yes, sir, no, sir, three bags full, sir. Who do you have any say? What can you do, man? 
Well, you're going to put your foot down. You're going to draw the line somewhere. Be firm with them. Oh, yes, like you were with Susan. I'm not making a best man speech. Well, that was different. I didn't want to offend her. Well, I don't want to offend Thelma. You can afford to offend Thelma. She's going to be your wife. <laughs> Look, man, it's their big day. You know what women feel about weddings? Oh, I know, I know. But it's getting a bit heavy, though, isn't it, eh? I'm surprised the service isn't in Dunham Cathedral with the Dagenham Girl Pipers. <laughs> it's the wonder they haven't cancelled World of Sport and are televising your marriage instead. According to that booklet, the best man is supposed to sustain me this week with comfort and advice. Yeah, well, here's my advice, mate. Call the old thing off. It's too late for that. We had to pay the caterers in advance. <laughs> what are my functions, then? Let's have a look. Ah, oh, dear. Get you to the church on time. Stand by your side during the ceremony. Settle the account in the vestry. Only if the bridegroom has forgotten so to do. But you have to tip the verger. Verger? Does he get tipped every wedding? Oh, he must be cracking it there. But with christenings and funerals, you must take home more than the archbishop. Look, I just wish you'd take your duty seriously this week. According to that booklet, the best man is the hub around which a well-run wedding revolves. It says there I should choose someone who is at the same time gay and reliable. I won't let you down, sailor. <laughs> I wonder. Look, I know you've just come out of the army, but I hope you're going to leave your barrack room vulgarity out of that service. It's supposed to be a house of God, not a parade ground. Friends of the bride, one step forward, wait for it, wait for it. Neil, two, three. Bride, two, three. The ushers are in charge of the congregation. Who are the ushers? Well, there's a cousin of Thelma's that you don't know, Podge Rowley and uh, John Gibson. Not Big John. I no, well, he's a distant relative. Well, I hope he's up the bottle. I don't want him drunk in charge of a pew. <laughs> well, I'm told he just sticks to beer these days. Yeah. Well, I'd better hang on to this, then. Swat it up. What's this one here? Oh, that's uh, something Thelma's mother gave us. It's uh, the medical council thingy. All right. Good, good. Where's all the dirty bits, then, eh? <laughs> here we are. And so to bed. And the great adventure of sleeping together for the rest of your lives. My God, what a boring thought. <laughs> what else? Will I make a good lover? Will I satisfy her? Will it hurt? <laughs> well, it will if she keeps them boots of hers on. <laughs> what will she think of my body? Does she know about your knees? <laughs> Look, there's nothing I need to know from that chapter, thank you very much. It's mm. useful for the other things like, well, like useful shopping and storage units and... Household hints, all that kind of thing. I can see that. They've got a funny sense of priorities, these family planners, haven't they, eh? There's three pages on sexual problems, an old chapter on floor coverings. <laughs> well, as I say, there is nothing I need to know from that chapter. It also says here, try and make sure that the bedroom will be nice and warm and that the bed doesn't creak. It also says, but there is nothing wrong with a sitting room sofa for a change of scene. It doesn't Certainly, say that. certainly. Oh, my darling. Get oh, my darling, just Get relax. Me. Sit back. No, no, the Get washing me. up can wait. Just lie back, close your eyes, and think of England. Terry, will you get off this silly brain? Get off this. Is he being rude? Trousers are the wrong size. Aye. Right. Mine and all. Suspicious, that. How do you mean, suspicious? The way he's taking such a long time over the trousers. He's all right. He's just taking care. So should we, mate. <laughs> I didn't like the way he lingered over my inside leg measurement. He was so thin, he was probably wondering if you had a leg in there. <laughs> Better look this time, I should mm. think. Now, so let's have a look. No, I can manage, thank you. I can manage. <laughs> Your friend seems a little uh, ill at ease. Well, just nerves, I expect. Oh, I see. Well, you're bound to really, aren't you? You know, before the big day. <laughs> How do those seem? They're fine, they're fine. <laughs> not too tight around the... Certainly uh... not. <laughs> well, if you're sure. When's the big event? The what? Your wedding. Oh, that. This Saturday. Oh, hope it keeps fine for you. 
Why? Eh? Oh, well, I thought, you know, I mean, surely a little sunshine must help. <laughs> well, in case you get your suits wet, are you? Of course not, sir, no, but uh, on such an occasion, I'm sure the ladies want fine weather. Well, I don't see what difference the weather's going to make. I mean, you've made your mind up, haven't you? You're not going to have second thoughts just because of the cold front coming in from the Azores. <laughs> Put it that way, yes, I suppose you're right, sir. In fact, <laughs> I was married in a blizzard. <laughs> Are you married, are you? Twelve years. Three children. Well, as a matter of fact, these trousers are a bit loose. <laughs> Twelve years. Yes, I Yes. These are all right. Oh, good, sir. Yes, I'm afraid we have a waist problem here. I don't think I've got a smaller fitting. Yes, well, he is a bit on the narrow side. Mm. In shape, though, but... He's so thin that when his mother made his bed this morning, she didn't notice he was still inside it. <laughs> <laughs> Should we get on? I'll have another check, sir. Let's see your hat on. Oh, get <laughs> no, will you? Well, it's all right. You don't have to wear it. You just carry it like this with your prayer book and your gloves inside. Do you? Have you got gloves? Well, I've got a pair of woolen mittens at home, but both the thumbs stick out. I mean proper ones, thin grey ones from here. Oh, what a bloody farce. I'm going to look like an MC at the Old Time Music Hall. <laughs> well, you've got to have a carnation in your buttonhole. That's another one of your functions. Have you got carnations? Thin grey gloves, top hats, carnations. I'll never be able to hold my head up in the black horse again. Well, it's nice to do things properly. St Mark's doesn't get many tail suits. It's mostly ill-fitting blue serge there, with brown boots and sprigs of heather. Ours will add a touch of class. Bring a bit of Belgravia to Station Road. Station Road doesn't need a bit of Belgravia. Station Road, mate, is perfectly happy with honest-to-goodness, no-nonsense, salt-of-the-earth surge. All this is just another concession to your middle-class mother-in-law. No, it isn't. It was my suggestion. Never in the world. It was hers, and it wasn't a suggestion either. It was a royal command. They're all the same, that lot, middle classes. Especially those that have just been promoted from the lower divisions. You know what you are, don't you? So I'll tell you what you are. You're an inverted snob, that's what you are. We're just hiring a suit of clothes. Clothes that are suitable for an occasion. We'll only have them on for five hours. You see that as a betrayal of your entire class. Well, that's exactly what it is. A betrayal of everything I stand for. We're only trying on tail coats, mate. We're not taking elocution lessons. We're not having to learn to do the lancers. We haven't got a marquee and a thousand guests dancing to Edmundo in his society serenaders. You're all still trying to be something that you're not, though, aren't you? You're chucking away good money just for the sake of your social aspirations. There's a million unemployed in this country. Have you thought of that? One million unemployed. Eight percent in this area, including me. I'm paying for the suits. That's not the point, though, Bob, is it? It's a matter of principle. Principle of what we're fighting for. Equality. A decent wage for a well job, well done, a, a fair crack of the whip, a fair slice of the cake, a, just a chance to hold your head up high and bring your kids up decent. Uh, I mean, you take away a man's work and you take away his pride. You were watching Panorama last night, weren't you? <laughs> Pardon? Weren't you? Well, so what? I never miss it. I am interested, interested, mate, in the issues of today. Social injustices. I am interested in industrial rationalisation and, and, and the redeployment of labour. Quote, quote, never miss panorama. You only saw it last night because on the other side it was I was a teenage werewolf and you've seen that five times. What would you know? Hey, hey! How could you possibly understand now you're marrying into the Tory party? Everybody knows you've got your name down for the squash club. Oh, so now you've got a social conscience. The thoughts of Chairman Collier. He... And after all those years of being a dyed-in-the-wool, uncompromising don't-know. What do you mean? I have always been solid Labour. Never in the world. You've always been a don't-know. And your family. Your family's never known for generations. Years ago, they probably had to toss a coin to decide between the Roundheads and the Cavaliers. Yeah. Listen, find anything smaller, sir, so we'll have to put that tuck in those. Your gloves, sir. Well, the hat's too big. Oh, one doesn't often wear the hat, sir. You just carry it like that, you see, with your gloves and prayer book inside. There. I think the bride will be very proud of you. No, she won't. She can't stand the sight of me. Oh. Oh, well, perhaps she'll grow to love you. <laughs> Strange thing to say. He was married in a blizzard. <laughs> oh, I see. Well, I'd better go and settle up.
Do you feel as daft as I do? Well, I don't feel very comfortable. A load of cobblers. Ah, yeah, well, the women like it. Yeah, some women more than others. You're the groom. No, thank God. Best man. It's the groom's in-laws are responsible for all this rubbish, though. You know the type. Yeah. Jumped up from nothing to a posh Sammy with a monkey tree. She sees herself as the Jackie Anassas of the Tudor estate set. Terry, have you got a pen, kid? Hello, George, how are you? <laughs> You're looking smart. Terry, I don't think you know Thelma's dad, Mr Chambers. <laughs> Well, you see, I'm very comfortable. You know, I'm a builder. I did very well in the post-war boom. I managed to survive that bad patch, and I'm doing all right now. But I was a bricky before that, and I'm still a bricky at heart. It's Thelma's mother what's got all these fancy ideas. It's luncheon he served in our house. Even if I only want a couple of cracker biscuits and a pickled onion. Dear me. We only take the telegraph just to impress the newsagent's wife. All airs and graces. <laughs> uh, it's daft. But it's harmless enough. Mostly. I, uh, <clears throat> I uh, didn't mean any offence. Oh, uh, no offence taken, lad. It's just that I was... Well, I was a bit upset at having to get all tarted up. <laughs> Me too. I'll never be able to hold my head up in here again. I said that. I know, I heard you through the curtain. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's just a uniform, isn't it, eh? It's just a suit for an occasion, that's all. Like, if you go riding, you wear jodhpurs. If you play cricket, you put flannels on. If you go shooting, you wear a Norfolk jacket. In Norfolk, anyway. <laughs> yeah, well, you try explaining that to my cousins from Stoke. All I know is I'm going to have to make a detour of that church on Saturday. I'm going to get my taxi to go right round by the bypass. What on earth for? I'm not running the gauntlet of the high street. Do you think I can pass the ship, the Cross Keys, the Fat Ox, the Institute and the Temperance Billiard Hall without somebody spotting me? <laughs> I'm going to get some stick from my father. I tell you, if he turns up, that is. There's no love lost between him and the missus. Oh, aye? Well, if there's any aggro, you know, it's my duty as best man to pour oil on troubled waters. You might have to if he gets going on the hard stuff. Oh, aye. <laughs> <laughs> might not be such a bad wedding after all. Aye. He's a caddy old soul, he's my old man. Ex-pitman, you know. Chew shag tobacco. Never takes his hat off at table. My granddad was a pitman. Was on the Jarrah March and all. And my Uncle Wilf. They dropped out at Durham, though. <laughs> he was never a well man. He was never a sober man. <laughs> Him and Wilf were only on that march till the pubs opened. Poor old Uncle Wilf. He's still in that dough queue today. Your Uncle Wilf has spent his life avoiding work. He lives here because of the high unemployment. He's the only man I know the Labour Exchange have ever given a clock and a long service medal. <laughs> All I know is... <laughs> All I know is that if my granddad caught me poncing about in all this ascot get-up, he'd turn in his grave. He was cremated. <laughs> all right, then he'd turn in his urn. Gloria, Hi. let's have some more whiskeys here, double. Oh, no, Mr Hi. Chambers, Put come it on away, now, lad, put <laughs> it away. God, stop me what this wedding's costing me. A few whiskeys won't make much difference. It's not that I begrudge Bob here and Thelma the cost. It's just that I would have preferred to spend the money on something for them. You know, something for their house, like a... Well, like a... Storage units. Ah, something like that. I think young couples need all the help they can get. Hi, well, in a week's time it'll all be over, won't it? Live and let live, that's my attitude. A week's time it'll all be over. The champagne buffy and the confetti and the speeches and everything. And we can just get on with being married people. Sharing the great adventure of sleeping together for the rest of your lives. Huh? Well, I, I was just, uh, I, I was just quoting from the book, the, uh, the, the official one, uh, medical and that. Is that what it says? Aye. I think I must have lost my spirit of adventure. Yeah. <laughs> Here, lads. Doubles. Of course, uh, <clears throat> quite frankly, I mean, uh, frankly speaking, I don't think that young people should get married these days. I'm, I'm speaking quite frankly, you understand, oh, Mr. Chambers. You yeah. see, you see, I've been through it. I've been through it all. My marriage failed. Oh. No, 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 no. I'm not saying it was all her fault. I mean, these things happen. But I wouldn't like the same thing to happen to Bob and your lovely daughter, Thelma. Yeah, well, you never know about these things, do you? I think the answer is living together, quite frankly. 
That's what people should do. They should just live together. I mean, that's what happens now. Well, it certainly is, according to my Sunday paper. <laughs> Seems to be the thing nowadays. You see, marriage is an outdated institution. Did you and get the... that from Panorama and all? <laughs> you can't live together, not up here. It's all right in London or Paris or Sunderland. But you can't live together on the Elm Lodge housing estate. Why not? Because you can't, that's all. They've got things like rotary committees and residence clubs, and they wouldn't call it living together. They'd call it living in sin or cohabiting. And they wouldn't speak to you or invite you to their Guy Fawkes parties. Ah, well, that's just it, isn't it? That's my old <clears throat> point. It's just another of your middle-class hang-ups. Why should you care what people think? Because on a housing estate, you live on top of other people, that's all. And however sick you get of their mindless chatter and Jimmy Young blaring out of every kitchen window, you're a part of it. And it's easier to join them than to lick them. You never get the mortgage living together. What a provincial attitude. Well, I am provincial. I live in the provinces. That probably explains my provincial attitude. What sort of attitude would you like me to adopt? An Albanian attitude? Or a Peruvian one? Or if you like, I'll have a Zulu attitude and have five wives and live in a mud hut on the municipal bowling green. <laughs> they never stand for that. <laughs> I mean, what about that poor woman on Sycamore Avenue? Living with that Indian? Ostracised at the co-op. It's just your small town mentality, mate. That's what? all it is. I've never seen you as a freewheeling nonconformist. What are you gonna do now, you back, Terry? Live in a loft with a woman's lip folk singer? You wanna get something behind you, mate, before you start criticizing other people? I've had five years taken out of my life, haven't I? Thanks to somebody not a million miles away. Every I'm top of the handicap now, aren't I? Everybody else has had a five-year start on me. All I've got to show for is a broken marriage, a gammy leg, and a tattoo on my left buttock. <laughs> We're back to steady, that. Steady, 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 steady. Come on, come on. God, stop me. This wedding's caused enough rows. What with me and the missus, me and my relatives, now you two. I should have bought you a ladder, Bob, then you could have both eloped. Could have saved all this time and money. Hey, you don't fancy that, do you? <laughs> I mean, there's a nice ladder in the builder's yard that had just about reached Thelma's window. It's too late for that now. The invitations have already gone out. And you had to pay for the caterers in advance. Uh, well, it was just a thought. I mean, it's, uh, it's not the economics that worry me. It's all this fuss and bother. Oh, it's like a royal garden party. What's got out of hand? And I was only saying to Bob this morning, you have got to draw the line somewhere. I think he's right, you know. I do. I think he's right. I think the time has come for us men to make a stand, to get things into perspective. What can we do? Yeah? Well, we can have a... A few more jars, you know, just for a start, to uh, <laughs> confirm our convictions. And then we will strike a blow for man's lip. How? Well, we can't burn our bras. <laughs> but, for a start, we can take these bloody things back. Right. 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 <sighs> a token of our solidarity. All for all and one for one. Is that right? Ah, oh, well, that'll do, won't you? Power to the people. All for one and one for another. That's it. Well, that's all inside leg got himself to then. <laughs> oh, hey! Shop! Shop! Uh, listen, Bob, no second thoughts now. This is merely the start, George. I shall be changing the roles for a modest mini, halving the flowers, cancelling the choir, and that bell ringer will be getting the elbow. <laughs> Boy, oi, 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 oi. Well, I, for my part, will not be tipping the verger. He won't take kindly to that. Then I shall kick him up the cassock. <laughs> what? Who what? The cassock. Very painful. Hey. What, what's a cassock? That's the thing the verger wears. That's a hassock. No! <laughs> a hassock is what you kneel on. Well, I thought a hassock was a Russian horseman. No, you fool. That's a Cossack. <laughs> I thought he played for Liverpool. That's Toshak. Bless, Bless you. you. Ah! Oh, oh, oh. A raid. <laughs> They've been drinking. Well, what are the three of them up to? They've been drinking, haven't you? Oh no, love, oh, we're not. Uh, no. Just, 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 just a swift half. Please. Yeah, we've, we've just been toasting the bride and the groom. Oh, yes. What are you doing here, dearest? We've come to pick up the page boys' outfits. Shouldn't you be at the florist's? Yeah. They've been drinking. When there's so much to do. Now, come on, I've asked you a question. What are you doing here? That's a fair question. Yes, love. fair do, fair what? question. What, what are you yes. doing here? Oh, well, we, we, uh, we, um, we just came to pick up our morning suit. We've only just. Ah! Ah! Yes, that's it. 
The morning shift. Oh, so much. And what time the chorus is closed? Men. That, that, that's right, a rose, one rose, and uh, the, the princess for the bridesmaids, and uh, the zephyr for the parents. Yes. Thank you very much. Oh, it's all too much. You were right. Now, have I missed anything? Cars. Hired. Photographers. Contacted. Flowers. Arranged. Bell ringers. Rung. Hymns. Booked. <laughs> that's about it, then. Till Saturday. What happens then? You get married Saturday. Oh, yes, I do, don't I? Yes, I do. I get married on Saturday. Well, compared to all this, that'll be a piece of cake. Cake? Baked. Arrives Friday. <laughs> Already paid for. Well, you've still got to pay for the choir and the vicar's organ. Then I've got to tip the verger. How much does a choir cost these days? Well, that depends. If you want the Vienna State Choir or the Huddersfield Choral Society, a uh, little more than you could afford, I should think. On the other hand, if you only aspire to the St. Mark's Syncopate and Six, it will cost you... Let's have a look. Uh, here we are, choirs. Boys, 40 pence, men and women, 70. <laughs> hey, do you know it was only a shilling when I was in the choir? I can just see you and your surplus and your toshock. I had a fine little voice. Make a note of that for the best man's speech. It says here, this bit's about the speeches, it says here that it's a good idea for the best man to expose some intimate detail of the bridegroom's childhood. Well, don't mention Deirdre Birchwood. <laughs> We've got enough hang-ups as it is. Oh, never mind, kidder. This time next week, you will have embarked on the great adventure. I'll be too exhausted to think of sex. Well, you can spend your first week laying floor coverings. <laughs> Or putting in your storage units. There's more to marriage than storage units. I told you that. I know you didn't. I should have listened. I should have gone straight to the registry office or eloped. Oh, well, never mind. The women like it. Think of it that way. Hello. Oh, hello, Thelma Pet. How's it all going? Fine, grand. Everything's under control. Mm -hmm. Getting through it all. <laughs> really exciting, isn't it? Do you really think so? It's driving me out of my mind. I mean it. My hairdresser's gone on holiday, so it means getting it done by Denny, and he's never done mine before. The dressmaker says he can't guarantee Susan's alterations on time. Mother's driving me up the wall, and young Dean set fire to his kilt. <laughs> Don't get upset, pet. Don't. Come on now, pull yourself together. Don't get upset. It'll be all right on the night, on the day. <laughs> just asked me to go away with you. I mean, why didn't we just decide to live together? That's what we should have done. Marriage is an outdated institution. That's what Claire Bloom says. It's what everybody's saying. Thelma. Well, don't just sit there. You're the best man. You've read the booklet. In moments of crisis, you're supposed to stay in me with, with comfort and advice. I'll go and get that ladder. <laughs> 